hey there, hey hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. We're doing another week-long reading vlog. I usually do them every week, but last week I took off and just did a weekend reading vlog. So that means that this week we're gonna be starting a little bit sooner. It is Friday right now, so I'm probably gonna go Friday to Friday. Woo -woo. I am on my way out, actually. I am gonna be spending the night at my parents' this evening, and tomorrow morning me and my mom are gonna be going down to Cousins, campus she goes to school here in florida and we're gonna tour it and hang out with her and have some fun so i'm gonna go but here's some b footage if i remember to film any so i had a really great time with my family this weekend. We went for a really long walk on Friday night and came back and just kind of hung out at the house, did a puzzle, and then woke up early the next morning where I drove me and my mom to Orlando where we met up with my cousin. She is going to UCF. This is her first year. She's a freshman. I didn't take any video of her dorm just for her own privacy's sake, but she showed us around the campus and we saw lots of really cool things koi ponds, pendulums, statues, all kinds of stuff. The campus is huge and I can't even comprehend because the school I went to a few years ago um, was had like 1,500 people. I don't even remember what number UCF had, but it was just ginormous. And then after we finished there, we went to an art festival downtown where we saw lots of artists. I didn't show too much of their work because I couldn't credit them properly in this video, but there were some absolutely amazing pieces. I loved them so much and some new artists that I will be following now. We stopped and had some lunch at this little Italian place and it was so good, authentic food from Rome. They talk about importing it and everything. And then we just walked around the art place for a while, uh, saw lots of cool things, saw some fountains, and then eventually we stopped and got tea at this really cool place where they have all these teas and herbs and blends and everything. And here's their information. And then we kind of walked through the like historic part of Winter Park and it was just a really enjoyable day. Now it is Sunday and it's almost noon to be honest. I've been up doing some stuff, but I am just about to start on my um, paintings. So I finally started painting again yesterday for the first time in basically two years. Um, I have continued doing some digital art over the past two years, but I've just been having a really hard time with creativity. And last night I came home after this trip and I painted and I painted a lot. And so I'm going to be incorporating as much of my paintings into these weekly reading vlogs as I can so you guys can see what they're about, but I'll take you upstairs and show you them in a minute. I am currently listening to the audiobook of Vespirtan, but that you would have already seen all of that on last Friday's video, so I won't be talking about it at all this week. And then the two other books I'm reading are Autumn's Tithe, I'll show you that later, I'll talk about it more later, and House of Leaves. Again, I'll talk about it more later. I'm hoping that I also can get to Within These Wicked Walls by the end of the week, but we'll see. So I have a package behind me. We're gonna open this and then I'm gonna go upstairs and do some painting with you all. Uh, I finally got my copy of The Storm of Echoes, which is the fourth and final book in the Mirror Visitors Quartet. This is the book I started reading them, I believe it was in January. It's Winter's Promises, the first book and I have loved all of them so, so much. And I've been really nervous and excited to finally get to this one. It's been published for a while, but it is translated. So I've been waiting for the English translation, which came out this month. But the audiobook, which I had listened to the book three, 
I'd physically read book one and two. I'd listened to book three, so I was planning on listening to book four instead of physically reading it. The audiobook's not coming out until November now. They had to move it back. There's a good chance that I just pick up this book and read it physically. It's just gonna kind of depend on time. So let's go upstairs. So here's what I'm currently working on. This is gonna be a collage that is gonna go on the big blue wall that you actually just saw behind me in the last clip. So it's going to be kind of a gradation from morning, sunrise, to like daytime, to evening, to midnight skies. I'm using acrylic paint and I'm using modeling paste so it is a little bit 3D as you can tell. And then I'm using a gold paint pen to help just connect all of the pieces and add a little bit more interest from my own personal style. This is the other one I did last night. And then I started to work on this background, but I haven't done anything with it. So I'm gonna start with this, get the focal point done, and then I don't know which one I'm gonna move on to next, but I might just do like all of the nighttime ones and then move over or I might do some of these. I don't know, we shall see. In case you're super duper curious, my supplies are a collection of paint brushes that I've bought over the years. I kind of just know what I like now, so I tend to stick with what I like, which is generally, I think these are called filberts, where they're like a square, but they're rounded, and then round brushes. And then my gold paint pen, I did rip like part of the label off, so I can't really tell you what this is, but it is the fine tip gold paint pen in this brand, I don't know. I have a peel away palette, so ooh, paint just fell off of it. Um, you paint, you put your paint on here, and then once it's dry, you can just peel it up. Assortment of canvases, they're not like super important. I buy them cheap. Um, a lot of times I buy them at stores that aren't art stores because you can get them really, really cheap there. Um, they usually have like a back craft section where they'll have like a package of a few assortments of them and I just go back there and I see what they have and I'll buy them. If I need a very specific size, I can't do that. I go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And then I am using three, three, two colors of paint plus white. So I have this blue, which is Windsor blue in the Windsor and Newton paints. And then I have this magenta color, which is actually Theo Violet. And then I have a mixing white. I decided to invest in that because I wanted to see if it was different than just regular white, to be honest. I'm not noticing a huge difference, but fair enough. And then I bought a huge thing of like the cheapest white I could find, which is just Artist Loft, because I just need so much white that I'm not willing to buy the really nice stuff. That, and then this is the modeling paste that I'm using. I really need to get a palette knife to help with the modeling paste, but I hate using palette knives, so I don't own one and I don't want to go buy one. I'm just gonna start painting. My hands will get very, very dirty, so I won't be able to show you a ton, but I'll try to show you as much as I can because my hands will be dirty. I don't wanna to touch my camera and be moving it around and stuff, so.
welcome to Monday. I've been avoiding folding my laundry for a few days now, so that's what I'm going to be doing while I talk to you right now. If I multitask, it doesn't suck as much. I get to start Caliban's War next. It is my next audiobook that I'll be reading. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to be starting it tonight when I go on my evening walk. I'm going to be sitting and doing some editing here in a little bit, and then I am going to probably watch some TV and then I'm gonna go on my walk. I really hope it is a five star. Uh, the first one was so very close and it was just like short. I have officially decided as of today that next week I am going to, in honor of the spooky season, only be reading horror. So I have picked out like seven horror books that I'm really, really excited about. I will be talking about them more next week in that vlog but if you have any horror suggestions if you're like you know what amanda i have been dying to tell you to read this horror it's about little children and you don't know whether or not it's paranormal or it's real by all means drop it down below this week i am making a dent into autumn's tithe tonight i'm hoping to finish it i am on page 200 so i have about 100 pages left i think it's like 109 pages left so even if i don't finish it today i'm going to make a good dent into it which means that i'll just wrap it up really quickly tomorrow and then start something else next up on the list of books to read is oh boy I don't have another physical book I need to read this month. I was going to read Within These Wicked Walls next physically, but the um, Macmillan Audio sent me the audiobook for it, so I'm going to listen to it instead of reading it physically. Um, and then I was going to do The Storm of Echoes, but I really think I want to listen to that. So I'm going to have to wait until November to read it, so I'll have to replace it for bingo, that means. I am eventually going to physically be reading Dance of a Burning Sea, but I don't have the book yet until the 19th, so let's go to my bookcase real quick. Next up, I have some options. Let's see what might be a good one. Okay, so my options are between these three. Either continue on with these two books, which I have technically DNF'd on Goodreads, but really in my mind they're on pause, or start a brand new book. I have removed on the board, I'll show you in just a second, but I have removed Oathbringer and The Sword of Kaiyan, which were both buddy reads from the board. Switched out book everywhere, but I don't know what I'm switching it out for. I don't remember what I picked for it because I forgot to keep that note here. And then for less than a thousand reviews, I ended up switching out for The Hideaway, which I read in my last week's 24 hour reading vlog. Favorite color on the cover was Crossbones. I have completed that. And The White Between Us was more than a thousand reviews. I have also completed that. This is what the board looks like. I'm gonna be flipping these two. I'm gonna be flipping these three really quickly. Request a wreck. Okay, that's pretty simple. Actually, I'm gonna need your guys' help for that one really quickly. If you are watching this video, recommend a book for me down below. I will also be going um, possibly on TikTok and asking for a recommendation. It counts. Even if I've already read the book, it counts. Do me a solid, please. I appreciate you so much. Just, like just any book, any book that you think I would enjoy, recommend it to me. Video game break. I have actually been thinking about it recently. I was playing so much of um, Skyward Sword a few months ago, like in July, and then I just kind of like stopped. So I've been wanting to get back to that. So I might have to pick that up soon. Instagram poll. It's funny, I've been like not on Instagram much. Go to the pool and read. That's really easy. I've been doing a lot of that anyways. And finally we have Pinterest break. Cool. Also very easy to accomplish. This is an angle we don't get every day. Uh, I just got back from my walk and it was a long one. So I'm putting my feet up on the wall. So I'm laying down. Uh, but I did start Caliban's War while I was out. Um, I didn't start it right away on my walk. I have just wasn't in the audiobook mood. I was a little bit nervous to start the book because I was like, oh, what if it's not as good? Whatever. You know, the normal like vibes that people get when they start a sequel. Uh, so I've only listened to the prologue in chapter one, but of course I'm loving it. It's really good. I don't really have anything to say yet because I really don't know what the book is about, to be honest. But once I know, 
I will update you with more details. I haven't done any physical reading. I sat on the couch and I watched Modern Family. It's 6 a.m. I'm getting ready to go for my morning walk and I just started chapter two and it's holding. <sighs> okay, too much talking. Good morning. It's Wednesday morning now. I only have a few minutes to talk before I need to leave and honestly that time is shrinking as I make excuses. I am 25% through Caliban's War. I have the book here, <clears throat> but I haven't been keeping track also with the physical book. Um, I've just been really, really enjoying the audio, so... I'm enjoying the book. I am. I am just not enjoying it as much as book one, but I do think that I'm still kind of in the setup phase. From what I remember of the author's first book, there's going to be a huge like twist soon in themes and it's gonna become a lot darker and a lot more gruesome and I really think I'm like on the cusp of that. I need to put jewelry on. Oh, this light is great. I love being bottom lit. I feel like why I'm not loving this book as much as book one is it's kind of formulaic. It's basically the same book as book one with just some different characters. We still have Holden whom I love and I'm really enjoying his chapters a lot but when you break down some of the other characters they're kind of just replacing Miller so the story is a girl goes missing chapter one she gets taken um, and so we have Holden coming to that planet to try to help some people eventually finds out about said missing girl and is trying to help and then we have her father who is trying to find her as best as he can and then we have a really unlikable character. Uh, I cannot say her name right now. And she's doing all of this political intrigue and trying to figure things out and try to stop the war almost from the other side. I don't dislike her, but I like her the least out of any of the characters we've had so far. And then we have Bobby, who I really like. And Bobby like brings a breath of fresh air because she doesn't have anything I feel like connected to book one. So I'm really enjoying her thoughts and opinions, but she doesn't have as much page time as the other characters and I'm not sure where she's going, where her plot is going and what's up with her. So I'm not disliking the book. Right now I'd say it's like a four star, but I do think it has potential still to do better once it picks up and starts doing stuff. I really thought I was gonna finish Autumn's Tithe on Monday and it's Wednesday and I haven't touched it since then. I'm really enjoying that book a lot. It's just a matter of, I think I overdid it a little bit with too much reading. Hey, it's the end of day Wednesday. I honest to God don't know why I'm coming and talking to you guys. I have absolutely nothing to say about this book so far. I'm at 46%. I'm gonna sit and do some listening before I fall asleep and hoping to get to 50%. Um, I'm enjoying the book. I'm a little at a loss as to why everyone says this one is like so much better than the first one. Like, this is a good book. I'm enjoying myself, but I feel like I have no commentary to make about this story. I guess there was a moment earlier where I thought that Prax made a decision that was gonna get Amos killed and I was really upset about it, but then it didn't happen. But I'm kind of hoping I can finish it tomorrow. Uh, that's gonna be kind of ambitious, to be honest, because right now I have 11 hours left and I'm probably only gonna listen for like 30 to 45 minutes tonight. I'm listening on times two speed. It's not unheard of for me to do five hours of an audiobook in a day. Uh, anyways, if I don't finish it tomorrow, it's no big deal. Hi, I just got back from the pool. Today was like a crazy busy day at work. So when I got home, I was like, let's go chill by the pool. It's sunny out, but like overcast. So it's actually quite nice. And while I was there, I was reading Autumn's Tide. I still have like 90 pages left in this book, but I think I'm gonna try to finish it up tomorrow. I am going to be doing some reading this evening after I shower and then make dinner. I'm just gonna sit and read the rest of the evening. So I think I can finish it, but I don't wanna put that kind of expectation on myself because I have other books I also might read this evening. So if I can finish this tomorrow, I'll be happy. I have exactly two hours left in Caliban's War, which means I'm 80% through. So that's kind of where it is. I might sit and finish up Caliban's War tonight. I might sit and finish up Autumn's Tithe tonight. I might just make a chunk through both of them. I might make a chunk through both of them and then also try to do a little bit of House of Leaves. Calvin's War is going great. I'm really enjoying it, but definitely not as much as book one. It's not as dark as book one, that's for sure. And it's really interesting because so many people online are like, oh my God, book two is so much better than book one. And honest to God, 
I don't see it. And if you want to actually know some of my very particular thoughts, I have my TikTok linked down below and I made a reading vlog. I made a few reading vlogs for this book so you can watch like detailed thoughts as I was reading. Um, it's really fun and I enjoy making those. I'm sprinting with a friend so I don't want to bother her but um, I just finished Caliban's War. God, I loved it. I almost rated it five stars right at the end because of how much I loved it but I didn't because it wasn't as good as book one. I don't care whatever those fools are saying out there. So I rated it a 4.25 because I'm ridiculous. But I'll give you more thoughts in the morning. I'm gonna go read some of Autumn's Tithe to finish up our sprint. Hi, welcome to Friday. Actually, I was originally planning on filming through Saturday for this vlog, but I finished up slash will be finishing up everything I wanna read this week for this reading vlog. And I'm really excited to start reading for next week because it's a theme and there's a lot of books on there. So we're calling it quits today, but we're not done yet. Today still has a few hours in it. Uh, so last we spoke, I had just finished Caliban's War, which was last night. I loved it. I loved it a lot. The ending was so fantastic. If you've read Caliban's War and you've read Leviathan Wakes and you saw my video where I first originally read Leviathan Wakes, you might know why I got really excited at the end of Caliban's War. There is a particular character that I mentioned in book one drove me insane and said character was not in book two. And I was absolutely fine with that, I, I, I was. But I also felt kind of like something was missing in book two because said character wasn't there. Uh, it was really weird, it was like when they were there, I wasn't satisfied, but when they were gone, I realized they actually fulfilled a role in the book that I really enjoyed and really liked. And there's hints from the end of book two that said character will be in book three. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really wishy-washy. I can't believe it. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed the book. For the most part, I didn't like it as much as book one. Uh, so I ended up reading book one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So I felt like book two had five star vibes. I felt like book one had five star vibes too, but there were things that they did that just couldn't quite get me to rate it a five star. Book two not being as enjoyable as book one, I couldn't necessarily rate it a 4.5, but it wasn't a four star, so I rated it a 4.25, which I think is only the second time in history I've done that. The other one was uh, Kingdom of the Wicked, which eventually, really soon, in November, I will be reading Kingdom of the Cursed, and I'm so freaking excited about that. I loved the characters, I loved the fast-pacedness, I loved the story, I love where it's going, and I love where it left us. It did kind of feel like book two was a little bit of a repeat of book one, slash it was setting up for future bigger plot points. It was good. I really enjoyed it. I really like James S.A. Corey's writing, who I found out is actually a pen name for two other authors, and I only looked into one of them them because then I got distracted and forgot to go back and look at the second one. But the first one has written under a few different pen names and he writes some fantasy and some sci-fi and some different things. And so I want to check out his fantasy at some point and see if it's good because uh, I like his sci-fi so I should like his uh, fantasy, right? Although maybe he's the one who's writing the parts I don't like. Who knows? Um, I'm still making my way through Autumn's Tithe. I have about 60 pages left of that. I don't know where my phone is. Um, I don't have it with me currently right here to show you. So I am going to get changed, go to the pool, and I think I'm gonna finish it up there or I'm gonna read as much of it there as I can and then come back and finish it up here. In other news, I decided to start Within These Wicked Walls today as my next audiobook. And I made it 40% through the book. I got the arc. It comes out, I believe it's next week. I didn't like it. Um, I decided to DNF at the 40% mark because the entire 40% up until then had been me like not enjoying myself. And I wanted to finish it because I really enjoy finishing arcs and being able to write about them and complete whole reviews. But I saw a tweet on Twitter today that said something like, reading a book isn't a hostage situation, you shouldn't be afraid to DNF. And I was like, you're right, random tweeter, you're right. Here are kind of the bullet point reasons why I didn't vibe with this book. One, it's a gothic story. I don't like gothic stories. I didn't realize it was gothic when I requested it. So if I had known that, I don't think I would have requested the book. 
two. It's a retelling. It's a retelling of Jane Eyre, which is a story I don't know that well, so I thought I would enjoy it because I tend to like retellings when I don't know the original story, but I have learned I really don't like retellings and they seem to be kind of this category of books that I just don't like for some reason, even though they're all so different from each other. Uh, three, the characters? Ugh. Okay, the main character, I didn't mind her actually. I thought she was really interesting and I wouldn't have minded reading a whole entire book about her if she had been written by someone else because this girl was awesome on paper but when you really started to look at her she was really illogical like really illogical she would say things like oh I haven't eaten a meal in two days and I really appreciate food and I cherish food because I'm poor and I know what it's like to go without food and then she'd be given food and she'd be like ew that's gross I don't want to eat it and then wouldn't eat it and I'm like girl you you are so illogical. So illogical. So besides her though, the other characters I couldn't stand. The main dude, the love interest, the guy who has like hired her, I haven't told you what this book is about, but the guy who has like hired her to come and get rid of the ghosts, he was the most infuriating character I have ever read, ever read. I hard bent to pick someone who infuriated me more than him because he would just pull this shit on our main character and I don't know if he was on purpose gaslighting her or if he was just an asshole or if something was wrong with him or what but he drove me insane and I was so ready to be like girl Andromeda it's the main character's name girl leave him leave leave just go just stop for the illogicalness of the characters I've already spoken on this briefly, but uh, they were very illogical and I couldn't stand any of their choices. None of their choices made logical sense. Like nothing they did made sense. Their actions were not motivated by logic and not in like a fun like, oh, human beings aren't creatures of logic. Like in a no, that doesn't make sense for anyone to make that decision. And then five, down here at the bottom, insta love. I hate insta love, and it was there, and it was strong, and there was no reason for these two characters to fall in love with each other. No reason at all. So this is the story about Andromeda, who is I don't remember the exact word that the book uses, but she is called into people's homes to get rid of the demons or the supernatural beings that are like haunting them, and she gets called to this one house. That's the story. She's supposed to go to the house to get rid of the bad demon boys and there's a man there who lives there he's 21 he has some servants and she's supposed to live with them until she gets rid of the demons and uh he has these weird rules like you have to have dinner with me every night and then spend time with me after dinner but I hate people and I'm not gonna interact with you but we have to have dinner together every single night and I'm gonna make it miserable and I'm gonna say that I don't want to do it but you still have to come <sighs> anyways so I have DNF to that book Good morning! It's Saturday. I ended up last night reading about 20 pages of Autumn's Tithe and then I realized I needed to work on something for my book club and then I spent four hours working on it. I'm planning a big huge readathon for December for all of us to partake in and it's going to take a lot of work but what I was able to accomplish last night has made me so freaking excited for it. I'm enjoying the work. It's fun and I can't wait to unveil the finished production for all of them. It was like 11 o'clock at night and I normally go to bed at like 9.30. So I just fell asleep um, and I woke up this morning around 7.30 and I have just finished Autumn's Tithe. I really enjoyed this book, guys. Um, I picked this up because... I saw the author on TikTok. She is a debut author. This is her first book. It sounded like something that would be up my alley. I'm just kind of like in the mood for fey fantasy right now. And so I bought it. It came out in September and I loved it. The ending shocked me so much, like so many times and in such a good way. And I was in emotional pain for most of the journey. I think I've already said in this video, but I did do TikToks for my experience of reading this. So if you want to watch any of those, they are on my TikTok, which is linked down below. The author has described it as more of a YA book, but honestly, with the dark themes and undertones, it's not childish to read. So that's why I really enjoyed it. I'm still reading House of Leaves. I have just picked up an echo of things to come. I've read the prologue while I was getting ready to film this. This tithe was coin flip, so I can remove that. And that means that I can 
flip this bad boy. So let's see what that is quickly. That didn't help anyone. Oh, friend picks next read. Okay, that'll be fun. I'll get one of my friends to pick uh, what I read for next week's horror week. I started, I should tell you, where is it? I started A Song for the Wild Built. I made it through chapter one and it really wasn't for me, so I put it down. So I'm not gonna be continuing with that. So I need something to replace that, which will be fine because I have plenty of horror books I'm reading next week that could replace that. And then for four word title, I did make it far enough into within these wicked walls that I am going to remove the prompt because I say I just have to make it 30% and I made it 40% through the book. Oh, I forgot one more. I get to flip five star prediction because that was for Caliban's War. I completely forgot about that too. Okay, so that means like, oh, I get to flip this bad boy, which is graphic novel. That'll be great because I have a graphic novel from Night Alley that I need to read, so I should probably do that today. Oh, shit, I did this one yesterday. I did it on TikTok, so you guys didn't get to see it, but I did go to the pool and read, so I'm gonna remove it because I technically filmed it. But yeah, I need to accomplish some stuff this last week because this coming vlog that you're about to see next week is my last week here. I will be traveling for work the 26th to the 30th. So I won't be at my house, which means I won't be able to read as much because I will be working pretty much the entire time. And when I'm not working, I'm gonna be exhausted. Hello, you wanna focus on me? Whatever I need to get for bingos, I need to get it this next coming week. Thank you for watching. I know I never made it to this stack of books because this week was a little bit slower with the physical reading than I prefer, but that's fine because we're accepting and we're forgiving of ourselves here, aren't we? Anyways, let me know down below what you are currently reading and uh, hopefully it's good. Hopefully you're enjoying it. I enjoyed my current read, so I'm hoping to pick up something good next. And uh, I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.